I am joined today by Dr. Mike Lovich. Mike, how you doing? I'm doing awesome. How you doing? Hey, I'm doing really good. Now, Mike, uh, it was kind of cool how we kind of got hooked up. Um, I talked about, I made a post something about Google and, and uh, different softwares on um, one of the Facebook groups. And you kind of chimed in that you've been working your butt off at optimizing Google for your practice. Is that right? Yeah, it's uh, saved me a ton of work and a ton of money in the long run. Yeah, I love that. Uh, so I want to dive in with people. People are like, what does this have to do with anything with clinic and gym? Hey, man, anytime that you can optimize systems, especially when you when you combine the clinic and the gym, one of the issues is you just you kind of double the amount of complexity sometimes between softwares and patients scheduled for one service or the other. So I thought this would be awesome because the best part about Google, well, the two best parts are, number one, they are working to integrate everything they can and they got a ton of money behind them. And the other cool thing about it is it's either free or it's cheap, right? Even better than that, they're huge. Yeah. The, the risk of something going on with like a hacker getting in and stealing all, everybody's data, I'd imagine it'd be pretty tough to get in through Google systems. Yeah. That's uh, and you know, you're, they got teams of people working to keep those servers running all the time. So it's uh, it's awesome, especially for a small business. Like it'd be different if we were a bank with, you know, hundreds of branches and storing that much data, but for what we're talking about, it's incredibly safe and incredibly useful. So uh, along with that, can you give everybody just a background in, in what you do all day and where you practice and all that? So they can kind of get a picture of uh, what, what size clinic we're talking about and whatnot. Sure. So I have, so my office, Delta S Performance, we started in 2017, and we've grown to four locations. We have three locations in the Boston area, one in the Brookline Newton Center area, one in Cohasset, which is on the South Shore, and one over in Seekonk, which is down by Providence, Rhode Island. And then we just opened up a fourth location out in Denver, Colorado. Fantastic. So, it's so important to be able to optimize Google or any tech, any, anything where you can make it happen automatically mm -hmm. because otherwise I'd have to be calling back to Boston every time I'd have to fly back to Boston to fix issues. And now I get complete control over everything. And hopefully if you're interested, I've been, I'm actually looking forward to talking more than just Google, but just how I generally optimized tech in my office to prevent me from having to go out and hire somebody. Absolutely, man. I think it's all, it's all great to talk about and it's all uh, worthy of us discussing. So uh, let's start with this. How the heck did you get a place in Boston or three places in Boston and one in Denver, Colorado? Uh, so my office is functional neurology only. I'm trying this new thing in chiropractic called playing well with others. And <laughs> all right, we got to so end the interview now. I'm sorry, this is not allowed. <laughs> I don't blame you. It's actually working, which is the scary part. As long mm -hmm. as I talk to like the younger generations, if I talk to anybody who's been in practice 20 or more years, yeah. uh, there's a select few people who are open to that. Um, but most of those guys are just like, they're, they're in their zone. They just do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. and, but everybody younger is on the board of, uh, they're, they're totally in tune with, hey, we're trying to get people better. Let's send him awesome. to the right person for the job. So I have, so I went to Western States. I got my chiropractic degree there. I did the sports medicine masters there. So I'm familiar with the functional movement. I'm familiar with uh, injury rehabilitation and musculoskeletal injuries mm -hmm. and working. I've worked with athletes. I still do that for fun on the side. I work with yep. USA sevens rugby. Nice. Uh, they have a invitational tournament outside of their professional tournament where they have like 3,600 people come and play rugby. So I'm on the sidelines doing medical for them. I work with uh, Ultimate Frisbee in the Boston area. And that's actually expanding now and um, to other parts of the country where I provide the medical services or I organize the medical services for them. And so that's how I get my musculoskeletal fix in. But in my office, we only work with the brain. We only do the neuro rehab. Okay. And how did that take you out to Denver? So have you ever been to Denver? I have. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty nice. And yeah. I like mountains. I like skiing. <laughs> uh, I don't like traffic and I like a better cost of living. Okay. <laughs> Boss is pretty expensive. Yeah. So do you still have the places? Are people just running them for you in Boston? 
Yeah, exactly. So I handle okay. all the business admin in Boston, and then I have I have uh, Dr. Grafasi, who's over in the in all three locations, and then we just hired another doctor, uh, Dr. Awesome. Sigel. So awesome, dude! Online training and getting people up to speed and doing everything so we can get patients better as quickly as possible. Uh, there's a lot of ways that we can use technology to make things easier for us, especially since I'm running all the business admin remotely. Yeah, it's so great when I can just log into their computer or I can better than a VPN, which is, in my opinion, kind of complicated to create mm-hmm. a virtual machine and put everything on there. Mm-hmm. I can get into their computer and show them what to do or do it for them, or I can create a little walkthrough, or I can do it on Google on my own and just have it automatically update their computer. Yeah. It, I don't know uh, how, how old you are, but uh, this t- Google's product totally eliminates the... Remember when you used to send like... Um, say an Excel spreadsheet and it was like version, you know, or, you know, Excel spreadsheet, nine, 2019 version one dash Mike's edits dash final, final, and then yep. capital final. <laughs> like you just don't oh, see that stuff anymore. I, I know that when we, uh, I worked for uh, Merrill Lynch bank of America for a couple of months while they were doing the transfer when they merged. Yeah. And so I, I actually worked it for them and oh my God because we were using all the Microsoft based products, that's what we had to do. If we had an update and something we got emailed to us, I'd create it and I'd be like, figure some stuff out. I figure some stuff out on theirs and then I'd have to send it to everybody else. And then everybody had to update theirs Yeah, and vice versa. So mm-hmm. having things automatically update is the best. Yeah. It's people so- don't understand the par- power of that. And I, I think too, like uh, what you're saying about optimizing the tech, there is no business where if you, optimize the tech or the process of it, you don't have a clear, huge uh, advantage in the marketplace, whether that's you can charge more or charge the same, but it takes you half or 25% as much time, or, you know, you're able to have access to something else. I mean, it's, it's just incredible what tech provides, but I do think that a lot of chiropractors are stuck in just, you know, I mean, I still see paper charts every once in a while. I'm like, what are you doing, man? You know? oh, when I see paper charts, I, I look at them. And I try to give them that little like seriously. So the way I usually explain this process to people who may be a little bit technologically adverse is I say, think about plastic water bottles 20 years ago, for example. Uh-huh. Do you remember how thick they were? Yep. Like the little like half a liter water bottles that you grab in your hand, they're pretty thick. The caps were... I would say maybe be half an inch tall. Yep. And then all of a sudden, if you look at a water bottle now, you grab the plastic and it's super thin plastic and you grab, you see the cap and it's tiny. It's this tiny cap now. Yeah. And does it still get the job done? Yeah. Do, or do they get to cut, cut a ton of costs on materials and supplies by making that process more efficient with the products that they're using? Yeah. So that's what you're doing with Google because in a chiropractic or in a healthcare based business, you can't all of a sudden pay your, pay yourself less to create the product, right? Yeah. So how do you cut costs? You have to go through other systems that you can cut costs with, without sacrificing patient care and without sacrificing the quality of life and quality of work of the doctor. So I love it. That's, that's why I think it's so important to do this. Yeah. Well, let's get down to the meat and potatoes and actually talk about it. Um, yeah. I'm kind of thinking, so there's, there's probably the tech you use um, on the administrative side of your practice. There's probably the tech that is around the patient visits, the EHR and all that. And then possibly there's some marketing tech. Um, maybe I'm not organizing the same way that you are, but uh, or in your mind, but where would you like to start? Where do you think the biggest impact is for people starting out? I want to start with the beginning, the basics, the most important things that you should do. Everybody who has an email through Google, they should get rid of that mychiropractic at gmail.com email. (laughs) If I see somebody and you're like, and you're like, oh yeah, send the patient to this email and they don't have a business suite email, which is only like 12 bucks a month, Uh then you're already opening yourself up to risks. That's dumb. Okay. You need to go on, you need to upgrade to a business professional account and you need to go in and sign a BA, a business associate agreement that allows Google, Google drive and everything within the Google system 
to be one step closer to HIPAA compliance. Right. And, and so everybody knows we're talking about a move that's going to cost you, what is it? A business accounts now $12 a month, $12 a month. And for that, you get the docs, everything, the sheets you get. Actually, I didn't know this until recently templates within Google docs and Google sheets only come with paid accounts now. And at that business level, I think you get unlimited storage, unlimited Google drive. I mean, just if you have, if you have under five emails, you get about, I don't know why this thing keeps shutting off. Yeah. Okay. But you're clear uh, right now. You're still good. All right, let's just keep going. Yeah. So, uh, you get five terabytes of storage per email if you have less than five emails. So you still get a ton of storage. Yeah, you're I mean, not you're not going to use that to, up. No. Yeah, you're not using that up anytime soon. So. All right. Good? Yep. Okay. You get your G Suite. You get your business account. You sign the BAA. And then you go in and you click on some features and you, the best part about it is you can Google everything. So you just go on Google and search, how do I encrypt my emails? And it'll tell you step-by-step step, you encrypt your emails. Now you can basically use Google forms, Google sheets, Google docs, Google everything as an EHR. Okay. So any patient information that you put in that system, anything a patient emails you mm -hmm. has that protection. You can awesome. also go in and say, how do I make my Google, my G Suite HIPAA compliant? And there are two, like about 25 page long documents where it tells you all the things you can do and all the ways that you can, all the things you can do to protect yourself and minimize risk. Because as we know, HIPAA compliance isn't a you are or you aren't. It's a series of steps that you have to take to reduce risk of people's personal health information from getting out. Right. It's typically more behavior based than it is uh, anything else. But you that doesn't mean you can't have hardware and software that is more likely to be um, compliant. Right. You can't just yeah. flip a switch and you're HIPAA compliant. It's yeah. you have to act that way. Yeah. So it makes it so much easier to do that. Now, the next thing is phone. You can use Google Voice. They just changed it. So now you have to pay twelve dollars a month per number and you can get one number per email that you have. Okay. But still for $24 a month to have a dedicated phone number that removes yourself, your, your personal information from the mm -hmm. customer or from the patient and giving you that layer of protection between your personal life and your business life. Right. Yep. I think it's totally worth it. And I believe they also, along with that, now when you pay, you can also receive, send and receive text and image messages. Is that right? That is correct. Yeah. And you can do VoIP like, uh, so like, I do some calls for my clients off of like a, a laptop doing click to call on, on the computer, which I think is fantastic for somebody working work in the front desk at a clinic. Exactly. You never have to give them an actual phone. You never have to pay for a line coming into your awesome. business, which I think last time I checked was 90 bucks a month around here. Uh -huh. We're talking uh -huh. about $12 a month for the same thing. You get yep. voicemail, voice to text, you get, uh, text messaging service because now you can have patients text you, which I think is real, is, which is worth its weight in gold because it optimizes your flow. Cause think about how much time you spend on the phone. Yeah. Think about how much time you spend playing phone tag with a patient. What if you just texted a patient and say, Hey, are you available? They say yes. And then you call them, they pick up. No, no nice. phone tag. Now, uh, along with that, I may be jumping ahead here, but do you use like Google forms to, uh, intake patient information to get them set up? And do you have them sign a, um, you know, waivers, documents, uh, consent to treats, all that on the front end through Google products? Or do you do something else? So until I switched to Jane app, uh -huh. all of my EHR was through, uh, well, except I was using Dr. Chrono and I had all the intake forms going through Google forms. Okay. So I'd, it was easy. Someone would schedule with me. I'd email them a, well, a canned email on Gmail. So if you don't have canned email set up for, uh, for Gmail, that's another thing you should do. Anything you emailed somebody once, or uh, let's say it this way, anything that you would email somebody twice, yeah, you should the, have saved as a canned email. Because the, the second time should have been a the second time should have been a canned email, right? 
<laughs> or at least the third. I would say yeah. the third time. And so okay. I have a, I'd have a candy envelope. Welcome to the clinic. Here's how you find us. Here are our diagnosis codes for out of pocket for out of network reimbursement. And here's a link to our intake form. It takes approximately 45 minutes to fill out. Please fill it out. And then what happens is we had all of our consent to treat on there as well. We had our entire par Q on there of for procedures, alternative risks and questions. We would say, if you have any questions, email us or text us. And it's great because now, okay, also at, and I worked with a lawyer to make sure that them signing, them running their name and dating it, saying, I agree that everything I have here is truthful and real and, and it is me doing this. That's equivalent of doing an e-signature. DocuSign, uh, Topaz sign is becoming less and less critical nowadays compared to just being able to do an, an online signature in that way. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so the, the intake form was all built around a Google form? Intake form is all Google form. It gets okay. automatically pumped out from Google form into Google sheet. Now, if you wanted to, you can get an add on that we use called document studio. And I think okay. it's like, it's, I think it's 30 bucks a month or 30 bucks a year. I don't remember off the top of my head. Cause we just started, we just started looking into it and optimizing it for a different product. But what you can do is you can have it automatically pre-populate everything they filled out into a Google Doc, into a separate folder in Google Drive. And you can, so it basically automatically pumps into a chart note. Yeah, we use one called Autocrat, which is an add-on to Google Sheets. Um, And if you have your chart note set up or a uh, report, it'll take all that information and enter it into the right places. It's pretty slick. It takes a while to set up, but this would be something I would hire somebody off of, I mean, for the listeners, I'd hire somebody off like Fiverr to do this for you. Yeah, you can do it off of Fiverr. I use Upwork. Uh, Perfect. You can yeah. either or anything that you can pay somebody to do and have them do it once. And then you oh. just, and you get to use it multiple times. Totally worth just getting yeah. an independent contractor for one of those sites. Yeah. But I have a, a form uh, for another project I'm working on where there's something like 120 fields and the guy charged me $94 to build it into a build a Google form into the, uh, the report. It's, it's pretty slick when you see it and you see it run, but autocrat, I, I really like. And by the way, the, my, everything Mike's talking to for everybody listening, we're still in $12 a month here. Maybe this, uh, document studio is going to cost you a little bit more than that, but I would guess that Mike, most people listening probably don't need that. Um, yeah. but even if you do, like, what are you talking about? One for you, it's probably one tenth of one visit every month, right? Exactly. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Yeah. And the great news is all that stuff is stored in your Google sheets. All the stuff is stored in your Google drive. So even if for whatever reason, any of these add-ons don't work, you still have the information sitting there in a database. Right. You can even have a pump down to a PDF. So it says just as if you handed them a form and then paid somebody in your front desk to scan it in. Right. And the other thing is once it's, because it's in that form, you can start doing some like inner office, in office research about like, Hey, if we stratify this for our females that are over the four, you know, 40, what do we see on the front end versus our males who are under 25? Like, you know, because it's already in a document, people forget that in that database format, you can start seeing some trends that otherwise you weren't going to see. Oh, a hundred percent. And for anybody who owns their own business, I highly recommend learning how to use Excel or Google Sheets Mm -hmm. because that's how you run a business. So you can, so what we do is, so I'm sure you've taken Greg Freeman's God documentation course where he talks about the neck and back myth and the uh, headache disability index, the dizziness and handicap inventory and the uh, tinnitus handicap inventory. We use those five outcome measures for all our patients. And in the Google Sheet, it automatically calculates it. And then we can pull bigger data saying how many of our patients are coming in with this range of uh, disability versus this range of disability. And we can try and stratify that and say, what kind of results are we getting based off of what range of, uh, of presentation that they have? 
Yeah, that's great. And, and with the, if you use a Google form and this is getting a little nerdy, but you can also, um, you can also demand, demand that the information is entered in a certain format. So like date format yes. or something like that, or you can say like, Hey, we're only entering height in centimeters because we want to have more accurate measurement, uh, later on, but you can require that. And the Google form will correct it for you in case anybody's doing like big data entry or you do like, say you do high school physicals for a hundred athletes uh, and you can make sure that it's all in the right order and all accurate. Uh, it allows you to do that through forms and into sheets and that gets real powerful real quick. It and the, makes it so much easier. What I always heard, like what you're saying about running your business off Excel or off sheets is a friend of mine always said, you know, big business, they pay a lot of money for data mining. Basically, they pay engineers and, and data analysts to look at the data and make sense of it and find out how can we make more, do it faster, whatever. Uh, in small business, you have data. You just don't know how to mine it. Uh, it's almost like a fish swimming in water. Like the fish doesn't know the water's there until you pull them out. And then they realize, oh, shit, <laughs> I like that water better. Uh, with the data, once you get enough of it, you start going, oh, wow, I didn't realize that you know, like, I'm, I don't know if you have a crazy business stat, but I'll, you know, I didn't, we had a stat country club golfers were worth four and a half, 4.2 times more money than anybody else in our, um, in our business. So if you were a business consultant, Mike, and I said, Hey, 4.2, uh, you know, country club golfers are worth 4.2 times as much. What would you tell me to do when I say, Hey, I'm thinking about starting a marketing plan. Right, exactly. It's pretty and simple. It's so like, easy to figure out how to do this because you can go on udemy.com, u d e m y.com, and you can get an Excel or a Google Sheet course on how to actually do this data mining for 11 bucks. Hey, I want to tell you all about Membrant. Membrant with a D in there, like Rembrandt. Membrant is an app platform. Now, this company is the one who built the Clinic Gym Hybrid app. And if you uh, purchase our accelerator program, you will get firsthand knowledge of what they do. But I think this is the next evolution in clinics who want to really give their patients better care, better service, while making it more convenient. So what Membrant can do is help you design a custom app for your company. This isn't just like rebranding somebody else's. This is your app that lives on the app store and your patients can download. Now, what's the power of an app? Well, let's just say, for example, that you have a certain protocol that you want your low back pain patients to go for. So let's say you include the McGill Big Three, a little talk about repetitive motions and finding your kind of McKenzie protocol of reducing your, your pain through those repetitive asymptomatic movements. Well, you could tag the patients, meaning that you kind of put them on a list that says you want them to have access to the low back protocols, right? And then you could have another program of videos, articles, exercise descriptions, all that, that only go out to your patients with shoulder pain, right? Or ones that go out to patients with plantar fasciitis. If you can build that program, then what Membrane can help you do is make sure that only the patients that really need the plantar fasciitis exercises get that delivered to their phone. That thing that they're staring at, some estimates say as many as 500 times a day, all right? So check out membrant.com, membrant.com, or send me an email, I can hook you up with those guys and they can put together a fantastic program. I think it's really the future and it's one more way that technology will help you make more money while providing better care and a better business model. So check out membrant.com. Let's keep going down the tech stack because I, I, I know that, I mean, uh, I don't know if you know Ben Collins. He has a great Google Sheets course, but it's pretty advanced. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the power is um, the, the power is really in just capturing. And that, that's what, if you follow the system that Mike's talking about, that at least you'll have the capture going on the front end, right? At least, well, the way I look at it is, at least you're getting the data. If you're missing out on getting data, then you'll never be able to use it. But if you get right. it, then you can learn later and you can go back and say, okay, what did I do here? And your seventh patient as a professional, like you don't realize how important that information is because you're just trying to keep your head above water, you know? Exactly. Especially if you're a small business and you're just, I mean, all I know is I need to get patients to come in, I make money, and then I got to figure out how to keep people in here yeah. or get more people to come in. So it makes it easier for us because then we get to figure out which demographics do we want to market towards? Which healthcare professionals do we want to get referrals from? 
and so on and so forth. But we can go even deeper with this. And I'd like to touch on a couple more things. Sure, let's go. Yeah. If you use any sort of Apple products, uh, so I'm big on Apple products in my office because it makes things easier. Uh, so if you go and you get a Dunn's number, a Dunn and Bradstreet number, which is basically a credit score for businesses, you can then create an account with something called Apple Business Manager. You combine that with a mobile device manager, which I'm using one called Mosel, M-O-Y-S-L-E. And it, so they charge like a dollar a month. I think the, the, the thing that I uh, use is a dollar and 34 cents a month per device we have. And it allows me to have complete access over any sort of technology that I buy, any sort of tablet, any sort of, so we're talking MacBook, we're talking about iPads, we're talking about iPhones, we're talking about uh, Apple TVs. It allows me to create native apps for use in my business. So that way, if you have a function that you're doing over and over and there isn't really a good app or you like, you don't need to be that fancy, you just need to get to the, jo- get the job done. Mm-hmm. You can create an in-office app through this. But I can also purchase an iPad for my boss in office while living in Denver. They'll open up the box. It'll boot up and automatically be branded with my logo, with my everything. I will even say in which order the apps are on the desktop. And we can have, and if I run an update and say, hey, we're changing a workflow or we're changing a workaround, it'll automatically update overnight without anybody having to go in and run the update. Okay. So you basically, you're not just uh, instructing the puppet to dance, but you're pulling the strings at the top. Completely. So the and it's, puppet and I only, only dance do it, one way. Right. And I only do it once for all four offices. Okay. So it's cool. So, and so things that I would only be doing for my office that I would need to do anyway. Now all I have to do is replicate it and I can, share that or if somebody says hey i want this app i can purchase the app and to put it on all the on everything so that way everybody has access to it wow that's awesome um all right so uh so we're at the the admin side right we're, we're just talking intake and office email and storing files right correct that uh, that Apple thing, just to put it in context, because I want to make sure we don't lose anybody for sake of not understanding. Because if you haven't done this stuff, it's like me telling you what surfing is going to be like when we're standing on the beach staring at the waves, right? Like, that's true. Yeah. So, uh, and it's one of those things too, where about three seconds in, you get a big ass learning event. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we'll keep going. So, um, one thing that I think is important to kind of uh, talk about. So, you have your storing. The Apple thing is once you have your process down, right? You can kind of build an app to. I don't know what replicate. You want to say. Yeah, follow that. Once process. you have the process down, so the reason why we started with Google in this talk is because your Google emails integrate with this mobile device manager. So when pe- when I send a tablet to a person in Boston, they just have to use their personal Delta S Performance G Suite email, and they can log in. And it'll be slightly different than if the other doctor logs in with their credentials. So it's not like you have to have generic credentials and everybody has to remember the password for everything. People still maintain the security because they have their own login credentials. Okay. I like it. And then you can also see what they've done or changed or not done. Exactly. Okay. All right. And uh, what else? So, so I'm trying to think of, so I think that Google forms into the G the Google sheet forming the dots would be a great first EMR for people. Um, you, it mentioned, will be. you mentioned Jane earlier and at the price point of Jane, like I can't imagine you can't start and, and end with that. Cause it's such a strong thing for 99 bucks a month or whatever the hell it charges. But if you can't handle that, um, you can hack one out of Google quite a bit. And I've read some articles online and some blogs talking about how to do it and how to keep it, um, as an EMR. Uh, so that's great. What, what else have you done with the Google suite of products, uh, for the admin or EMR side of things that you think are worthwhile for people to kind of learn about? So this is from an admin perspective, but also moving on. So in our office, we don't have front desk staff. Uh, we pride ourselves in doctor patient communication and getting to a doctor easily. Think about it in Boston. If you ask it, you see a doctor for seven minutes. And then if you have any questions, you get their medical assistant afterwards to answer all your questions. So right. that's a big value that we provide. However, if you're looking at it and you're saying, okay, 
how do we optimize doctor-patient communication? We use Google Forms. Okay. We also use Jane as well, like I, like I posted online. And the reason why we use that is because we, you can use your Google credentials to log into Jane as well. So, that, so everything integrates connecting with Google across all platforms. Okay. But now let's talk about from the patient perspective. So let's say that you had a situation where you wanted to work on an individual product or individual project, and you wanted that project to have a certain feel to it. So let's say we were creating a new office in mm -hmm. Providence, which we did. Okay. If you have one email that acts as a front desk email like we do, so our Boston at Delta S performance email is what we recommend all patients reach out to in the New England area. However, if you have a patient down in Providence, they're not driving to Boston, they're going to feel like you're not a local business to them. But oh, we are okay. local. We're right across the street. We're 10 minutes outside of Providence with one of our offices. We're just not going to create a brand new email that we have to check another email. You can use something called alias emails. Mm -hmm. So this doesn't charge you anymore. So they charge $12 a month per email that you have. Mm -hmm. But you can have unlimited aliases, which mm -hmm. means I can create another email that can be used as a login for another system or I can create an email that can be used for a marketing project. Mm -hmm. Like uh, I, for a while, I was just trying to get people to send me questions so I can make social media concert, a content. So I made an alias for my main email, which is info at deltasperformance.com. And that alias was questions at deltasperformance.com. For our Boston office, we made an alias of Providence at deltasperformance.com. So that way patients feel like they have that local community office and they're not going, they're not just going to some conglomerate. So this is the new version, uh, or this is the email version of like when, uh, if you want to open up in Providence, you're like, I don't know what the area code is, but you're like, hey, we need a, a 528 area code number to make it feel local. But it really just get it, it's, uh, it just gets piped to the same exact phone number, right? Yeah. Exactly. It, it helps create the, so one of the things that's important is when you're create, when you have a business, you want to make sure that the, it's not so much what you think it feels like. It matters what the patient thinks it, it feels like. Cause if you're not getting that communication across, that's on you. Mm -hmm. So if a, uh, if a patient is uncomfortable or it feels like they're, or it feels weird to them, yeah. then we have to think about how can we change that? So that way they're comfortable through in and throughout without having to, uh, create a whole new system or a whole new yeah. uh, workflow that, I mean, may end up taking extra manpower, may end up taking extra, um, an extra hire. Yeah. So now we don't have to do that. I think a cool thing too, is if anybody's ever in a system where they're trying to test things like, so I don't know if you use Zapier or like MailChimp, or you want to make sure that, you know, somebody gets an email. So you put yourself in and oftentimes you enter your, yourself, uh, it, but the problem is that if you use your own email address, it treats it as a contact and, you know, it's hard to get it to test multiple times. I learned that if you do, let's say Mike dot Lovich at, uh, what is it? Delta S performance. Yep. Okay. And let's just say that's your address. If you use Mike dot Lovich plus one, so the plus sign and then one that will in the CRM system will be treated as a unique, a unique content contact but all those emails will go straight into your Mike.Lovich account. And you can do that plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four. You have unlimited numbers of that in every Gmail address. So if you need to keep testing, and I've, you know, I don't know if you've ever gotten to this, but I've had testing go awry where you're up to like plus 13. <laughs> That's when I know I need to call it a night. It's like when I'm into the double digits. But that also allows you to test some products and treat it as a unique content contact if you need to. Exactly. And we do that all the time because okay, the idea good. is I'm not the only one screwing people screwing it up. <laughs> no, because you, the cool part is that you can learn all this stuff just by watching YouTube videos. You don't have to go to yeah. some new podcast. You don't have to go to, uh, and you don't have to like figure out a foundation. You just go to YouTube and you can watch all these videos. And I just, there's, isn't really much to look at in these videos. Mm -hmm. So I was on a long car ride once and I just started playing videos back to back. And I just started every time I would hear something, that I was like, oh, I can probably use that. Then I would put it together. So right now, the latest project that I'm working on is how to use Google Groups. 
because now we're starting to create, we have enough people working in our offices where we can uh, work on individual projects in the Boston office, separate from my office here. We have a guy in California that's working on other projects. So the idea is how do we do that and how do we keep it organized? Google Groups is a way to do that. Okay. And can you explain a little bit of what, what that is? So Google Groups is a way for you to organize your business into teams. Okay. So let's say you had different teams you can have, and people can be on multiple teams. So let's say you had a project going on currently where you had a team that was, I'm just going to pull this out of my butt right now. So let's say you had two, one doctor overseeing it and then you had maybe a massage therapist and a, one of the front desk people all working on this project together. You wanted to be able to oversee it, but you didn't need to be micromanaging it. So you say, here you go, go do it. This is your group and we'll call the group Project A. You can also have another doctor and maybe a different front desk person or that same front desk person working mm-hmm. on another project and create a separate group for that. So you can manage productivity and make sure things aren't getting lost. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> and, and so uh, when, you, when you put these groups together, um, you can share documents, you can share project files, pictures, all that stuff, but not encumber everybody else with that. Because in small business, typically what happens is in a tiny office of say five people, you just let everybody have access to everything, right? But then right. there's clutter and there's, there's security issues and there's all that. And then you're thinking, does everybody need access to everything? If they're not involved no, in the they project, don't. do they need access? No, they don't. It's just the, the default setting typically, right? It's like, oh, I just don't want to deal with this. And the idea is if you spend that extra one minute of work to change that default setting, now you get an opportunity where things can run smoother without you having to have your thumb on the pulse every single, the entire time. You don't need to be, yeah. you can turn your attention towards building the business. You can turn your attention towards other projects that only you can handle and you allow other people to do their thing. That's why you hire them. Okay. Yeah. I, I love, I love what it allows you to do there. And, and man, it's, you'll move so much faster if you let other people do the work. It's tough especially when it's your little baby, but man, I'm, I'm sure you've run into that, but it, it's tough. But when you let them go, it's amazing how fast you can go. Exactly. All right. So Mike, let me ask you this. Uh, I think we could dive into detail about every single, uh, the use of every single, uh, software that you've got, but let me just ask you, because maybe you'll cue some or you'll, you'll pique some interest here. Can you just name everything that's in your tech stack for your front end, and, and EMR. So all your administrators. So do you use, uh, MailChimp, Zapier? I'm trying to think of anything else. Infusionsoft, uh, any landing page software, you use Google forms, you use Google sheets, you use Google docs, Google drive to store it all. Right. We use document. Stu- we're between document studio and Zapier for flows. Okay. We don't use MailChimp. Uh, we don't currently send out newsletter emails. Okay. Uh, that is a project for the future. I just don't want to, we have such a niche practice that we don't mm-hmm. want to, we don't really get many repeat customers. We get people who are referring other people in. So we're trying to figure out a different way to use a CRM. I'm, I use Excel for my CRM okay. and we use OneDrive because now I have it. Oh. I can send the Excel spreadsheet through to everybody and I can say, Hey, here's the list of all the people that I got accumulated through this person on Upwork. Now here's access. Here's since my other two doctors say here's access to it. Go use it and call people, and they can automatically update it. Okay. Uh, we use JNAP for our and for people EHR listening. Currently. OneDrive is the equivalent of like Google Drive, right? Right. S- similar. Yeah. It's the okay. Microsoft equivalent, but you do need to have Word. You need to still have, you need to still have like the Microsoft Office suite on there. Um, there are certain things you can do with Excel that you can't do with Sheets. At the level most people are, at, are listening to this podcast for, it's probably not going to make a difference. But again, just take a class. And it's $11 to take a class on this stuff. So <laughs> take a class. You learn all the information once, and then you get to use it, and it'll save you a ton of money in the long run. All it is is money and time, right? We got enough of mm-hmm. that. So I use G Suite. I use Every single time I see a new app with G Suite or new Google app, 
I figure it out. I figure out how it works, what I can do with it, what I can't do with it. And I try to say, is this something that it will help me run my business smoother, make more money Mm -hmm. or save me time? So Google keep it's the, so you know, iPhone has notes. It's the Google version of that. And now you can have shared notes between everybody. So you can have an ongoing thing. Like we use it as projects. So we say, here's our current project. And as we're discussing it, we update those Google, we update the individual note in Google keep. Love it. You can make chess checklists on there as well. Okay. You can make a checklist. Like here's your to do list for the day. You send it to your person. They see it in the morning and there they go. They got stuff to work on all day. Very cool. And what other, what are softwares are you using? Uh, Let's see. Actually, not too many at this point. I keep finding new ones. Yeah. Do you use any project management like Trello, Asana, Basecamp? I was looking into Trello. Well, I use Trello for a different project with like unrelated to my business. Yeah. It was like Trello. cool. It, yeah, it was cool. It worked out well, but I didn't think it was going to be good for my business since mm-hmm. I was able to do that same exact thing on Google Keep. Yeah, I think the only suggestion I would make there is, uh, number one, it sounds like you have an incredible understanding of the tech and never forget where the, the lowest ranking newest member of your team will be when they enter your company, right? Right. I think Trello is super simple, super visual. It's very basic, but it allows you to add checklists. And if you had like, so what Trello is for those people listening, imagine you had five columns on a, on a whiteboard. And I just had post notes and I stick it and I say, uh, let's just say I had patients. Stage one is they called in and made an appointment. As soon as they come in and they're there for their first appointment, I put them in stage two. And then stage three is returning for their third visit. And then stay, and then they stay there for a while. And then let's say they enter the gym and, and they, that's their fourth stage. And then uh, my online home exercise program is stage five, right? What Trello allows you to do is see who is where, just a real quick visual thing. So I can even look and go, oh, let's see where Mike is. Okay, ooh, he's already in stage five. Oh, that's great. I didn't realize he progressed that much. But the other thing it lets you do from a business perspective is when you move the card from stage one to stage two, it can kick off um, automation. It can kick off, it can automatically say every time you push somebody into stage two, it gets a checklist. So what are the things you want done in that second stage? So like in your in your very niche practice, what is everything that you want to happen after that first visit? Is there a bunch of stuff or on the second or third visit that you want done? Uh, it depends on the patient, of course, but yes, of course. Yeah. So it'll automatically populate that checklist onto their card and you can go like, and I don't know your business that well, Mike, but I, you can go like, all right, look, Mike did a, uh, number one, two, three, eight, seven, or eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, Dr. You know, B did three, four, five and 17, 18, 19, you know, so, and it'll tag who did it. And then you can also write little notes there. Like FYI, ask about his dog, uh, was in the hospital, you know, and it'll give you little tips and tricks as you have that, that card working. So it's, it's pretty handy that way. So you, you can do most of that with Google keep. And the reason why I use that is because when it stays inside the G suite, mm-hmm. then it stays inside that HIPAA protection. Oh, good point. Good and point. so that's one of the things that I'm very conscious of is risk management. So Not Google always. keep is a, is a project management software and it, it can move like cards and whatnot. You can optimize it to do most of that. Moving the cards, it can't do, but you can have okay. multiple cards in that section, and you can, you can, you can work around it. You can get it okay. going. I'll have to, I'll uh, have again, to check it, that out. Yeah, just look into it. You'll see, and you'll see. Like, yeah. there's certain things you'll be able to do, like Trello. There's certain things that Trello can do that you can't do, but because of yeah. uh, that one little issue of HIPAA, yeah. I try to, I try to make it work as best as possible within the the walls of G suite. That is a good point, dude. It's a really good point. So, uh, the other software that I think you might want to check out and it will have that same issue, but if you're a higher level tech guy, um, you ever checked out process street. I've not heard of that one though. No. Oh baby. I almost, I'm almost nervous to tell you, but if you really know the process of your business process street is incredible. 
So instead of just project management of like a linear checklist, you can do conditional checklists. You can do, um, you know, uh, if, if the process is X, you can put timers on it. You can put, um, field-based, uh, conditions. So if the, if it's female, you know, you do this, if it's male, they do that, or if their birthday's coming up or, or the insurance or cash, uh, you should check it out. Cause it's like a project management software for somebody who actually understands tech. So you, you can do everything you want as a process. Oh, that and sounds as, awesome. As we know, a process is like, uh, that's where the real money's made. You know, McDonald's didn't make it off the quality of their food. <laughs> They made it off their process. <laughs> Not at all. Yeah. And yeah, so the process hot. can make or break a business too. Absolutely. And again, going back, if you do the Luckily process every perfect. time, I, I was going to say, if you do it, if you do a process every time, you also have much better data because you're pulling the same data points every time instead of, you know, randomly do it this way, or I did it Mike's way that time and Josh's way this time. It's like, nah, it's not how we do it here. Yep. You don't have to figure out a new process and say like, what variables do we change? You have the same variables every time. So it's easy to yeah. replicate or change. Right. So I want to check that one out. Any other tech that you think people should check out in the world of, uh, you know, this small muscle skeletal provider, uh, sounds like you're, are you pretty happy with Jane? I'm very happy with Jane. They can improve their charting software, but everything else, the entire, the rest of the entire Jane system, including their support team, I'm very happy with. And I hope everybody's listening to that. Cause obviously through this, I mean, Mike, Mike knows tech. And for him to say that a software is very good, I am, I'd am i bet heavy money that you've lifted up the hood, uh, removed parts, looked underneath the, uh, the transmission to make sure they even took time to, to paint the underside, right? Right. And yeah. I mean, I even went as far as I'm so unhappy with their actual charting part that I started learning JavaScript so I can make actual... Um, actionable steps and recommendations for them instead of saying, this is bad, fix it. <laughs> so you're, you're fully, uh, you're, you're fully committed. Like you believe in the software enough that you're willing to either hire an outside contractor or learn JavaScript, uh, scripting so that you can do it yourself. But that's, uh, yeah, you're off the deep end homeboy. <laughs> well, it's, it's more like I'm not going to complain about something and then not offer offer a viable alternative right but it also is above the line of mike knowing that this is a piece of crap you know what i mean like (laughs) you would have thrown it out right i mean you would have you wouldn't have be committing the time because you know what it takes to do this and it's worth it to put in the extra time to get what you want right i mean i was using wix before and i was sort of unhappy with it for my (laughs) website and then i taught myself html and css and then i had a better idea of how to use wix and i'm very happy with it sometimes just that, that learning curve is all that's needed to make your experience with a technical technological project better. Wow. Uh, you can't just expect to walk into a product and have it work automatically and have it work for you. That's, that's not how this stuff works, unfortunately. Awesome. Well, Mike, uh, I'm, I'm sure that we are just barely skimming the surface of this, but unfortunately I got to wrap this up, uh, cause I got another meeting coming up. Um, would it be okay if the people listening to this reached out to you to ask you some questions or can they hit you up on the Facebook page? Sure. More than welcome to. Okay. What's the best way to get a hold of you? So shoot me an email, info at delta s performance.com. And that's delta spelled out and then S is in the letter S. S is in Sam. Okay. Performance. Delta S like entropy. Okay. I like it. <laughs> delta s performance.com. Yep. All right. Fantastic. Well, Mike, thank you so much for the time today. And on behalf of Dr. Mike Lovich out in beautiful Colorado, uh, this is Dr. Josh Satterley saying, go out there, maximize your license, optimize your software and live the life you dream of. Thanks so much for checking out these videos. I hope they're useful. We'll cover things like rehab, exercise, business model, progressions, layout, everything else that helps you build a clinic. So if you're interested, you can click here, there, here, here, or anywhere to get more videos just like this. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you soon.